And the fourth item I found that really is the secret of jazz trombone is doodle tonguing. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, maybe you're having some challenges with it. It's not a simple concept. Um, either is double tonguing or triple tonguing. The key, you got to practice it, like isolate it every day. Get the Arbenz book and start working on it. The thing that's different about doodle tonguing is it allows you more of a smooth, because double tonguing can be and there's smooth double tongue also, which I was never that good at. Da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da -ga -da. I quickly learned kind of early college that the doodle tonguing was going to help me do what I wanted to do and sound more like Carl Fontana, right? So um, essentially doodle tonguing is four syllables. And if you haven't heard of Bob McChesney, you should go look him up right now. He is one of the best trombone players in the world. He has the most fabulous technique. And early on, he was asked continually of how he could play so clean, so he wrote a book on it. And I can't believe it's already been like 25 years, I think, um, where he wrote this, the Doodle Studies book. I'll put it the link to go buy that on this page because every trombone player should have that. He's given it a lot of thought and he's come up with four syllables. So it's basically your normal tongue, you know, for the starting the note would be da. Kind of a nice legato tongue. Instead of ta, you're going da. The second syllable, which is really kind of challenging, is the ul. So it's the da dl da dl da dl and it's basically that's when the air is passing around the tongue and your tongue is up in the top of your mouth. So it's da da la la It's sitting up there. And one thing I've really found a tip to help that is try to just play a B flat scale with the ol position. So you're used to how the air feels in your mouth. It's a little bit different. So I'm going to go all. So I have a pretty open sound even when I'm in that position. And that's kind of key. So that's one thing that might help you. Um, when you're in all, the next syllable that is most common is the la. So da to start things. All is always the off beats. And la comes after ol. That could take some work and Bob has laid this out beautifully in the, his book um, along with a CD so that you can hear him do it and he's thought about the progression of it. So I'm rushing through things here just to let you know that it's out there and you should check that out. He's perfected it. Um, the last syllable is ah, which actually goes back to my first tip, natural slurs. So ah is the absence of a um, articulation and just allows the horn to do the speaking for you. And most of the time you're using this is when you're descending. A lot of times when you're coming down, you can let the horn tongue it for you. So like, I went da ah, and both sound just as clear and the same, right? So da da la da la da la da la. It takes a while to get things to speak. So same old thing, slow repetition. If you haven't been working on doodle tonguing, get a nice start on it and keep it up every day and you'll find that it really starts to get better. But as any great jazz trombone player that I hear, at any given moment, they're kind of doing these four steps at the same time. And it is the only way that I've found that allows you to compete and be in the groove with sax players and trumpet players, right? So anthropology, you'll notice 
Well, first of all, that the Omnibook bass clef is written an octave too low. You would just never play the head down there. The new real book is in treble clef, and so we'll use the old real book, which then has some mistakes as far as the melody. So it's a good lesson in jazz to just know that you should probably always learn the head and melody from the recording. And if you're going to read written music, just know there's going to be some discrepancies and you might have to read different clefts. So your jazz improv skills go a lot farther than just making up a solo, right? You got to adapt to life. <laughs> I'm ghosting. I'm natural slurring. And I'm not doing too much alternate positions there, but then I do here. Why? Because that's closer than here. Then notice fourth position D. Natural slur. And I'm ghosting there. I'm blowing off that first A. Because it grooves, I don't miss it. Right? That's the one where I'm already out here, so why not play the B flat? Does that take a second to get used to it? Of course it does. Slow repetition. So if you're having a difficult lick in your jazz band music that always sounds rough, only play that. My video on two minutes, power of two minutes. Concentrate only on that several times a day for two minutes straight. And you'll start to notice, oh, I can play a B flat in fifth position. And that reduces the movement of my slide. And, oh yeah, I could natural slur that. And maybe I'll blow off that note so that I don't have to worry about it and trying to get all the way out to fifth for an F sharp. Who cares about the F sharp? Don't play it. Um, it's more important to stay in time. So hopefully these four tips can kind of get your mind rolling and you'll probably have questions. So feel free to, of course, email me. Good luck, get practicing, and we'll see you next time.